Hey guys, Lorena Magani here with New Filmmakers Los Angeles coming to you from Cambridge, Los Angeles and West Hollywood. Today I'm talking to producer Joey Horvitz about his roles in producing for Lexus short films with the Harvey Weinstein Company. Farnell, got the target in sight. She just passed the old mailbox, approaching the iron gate. All right, we've just got a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and make the announcement. I'm switching channels. It's go time, Barnell. Attention, everybody. The guest of honor has arrived. Please man your battle stations and let the party begin. Hi, Joey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Joey, your role as producer for two of the films that we screened, Market Hours and Operation Barn Owl, how did you get involved in producing those two shorts? Well, this is actually the second year of Lexus short films. So um, Lexus is uh, one, of, one of the sponsors over at the Weinstein Company, and they, wanted, they were the official car of the Weinstein Company. Um, I happened to be very friendly with the COO of the company, David Glasser. We, had, we worked together and we had our own company together in film production and international distribution. I had done movies on straight to video, also um, bigger budget films like The Illusionist, and then went and did commercials as well. So I kind of had the, the uh, I guess you could say, that the knowledge base for something like this. And so um, we worked together with the Weinstein Company last year. And so my job last year, um, as the same as it was this year, was to find the directors and to make the movies. And last year we, uh, we focused, Lexus wanted to focus on five regions, which was the US, Europe, Asia Pacific, China, and Japan. And this year they just did, um, they just did two, and it was the US and Japan. And so basically, uh, we worked on the creative together. I did this massive search for the directors. Um, we made the movies, and we've just gone through the premieres of the films, and now we're beginning the marketing of the films. We're getting the marketing ready for the online launch at the end of October. How did you search for the directors that were chosen for the projects? We wanted to find somebody that wasn't right out of film school, and we also didn't want to find somebody that was established. So it was trying to find that sweet spot. The Academy Awards have 70 Oscar qualifying festivals. We took those festivals and the Academies and some other festivals, took five years oh my God. of every single person that got into the festival, not necessarily one, but actually got into the festival with a short film. Um, and then we cross-referenced them and took this year just the Americans and the Japanese. And these were hundreds of people. And so then what I did was I watched every single short Wow. Myself, <laughs> yes. It was, it was quite an undertaking. Um, and then um, we have this creative brief that we gave to our directors that they came back to us with a treatment, and we slowly whittled down to the two directors that we have. Wow, so cool. So you have a background in producing these big budget films, like The Illusionist and, and, and other films. How does that differ from producing short films? I wouldn't say I have a big budget film background. Illusionist is probably one of the bigger sides. I would say my sweet spot was somewhere in the three, four million dollar range, which is really not really big budget. But that being said, it's, it's pretty much still the same mechanics. Um, like when you think short film, you think, you know, and I've done them both ways, where somebody borrows, beg borrows and steals from their parents and their friends and they hire people that work for them for free and they, you know, they do their best on a, on a, on a shoestring budget. And I'm not saying that we had any massive budget because we didn't have as massive budgets as one would think. I always bring this up. I think it's almost easier doing it on a shoestring budget than it was the way that we did it. Meaning, when you're making a film for the Weinstein Company and Lexus, you can't really go non-union. We tried, and we ended up having to go non-union. We, we ended up having to go union. That's a massive hit that somebody that's doing it on a shoestring doesn't have to deal with. Try and go to your production designer or your customer and say, can you please try and, can you please work for me for half your rate? When you see names like Lexus and the Weinstein Company. Of course. People are getting full rate. 
You know, so it's like, and we had to make this in three days. Each movie we made in three days. Really? Because we couldn't afford any more days based on the prerequisites that we had to have. We had to have a DP and an editor that was basically established, that was approved by the Weinstein Company. But I couldn't like go and bring, because I know many people that I could probably bring that we could take it, you know, not necessarily take a chance on because I know they would do good, but that's just not how these films work. We give our filmmakers everything they need, the support that they need to make the films. What then is the focus with these filmmakers after they've gone through and you have the screenings, you know, the, you have the screening for them, do you develop them, do you help to develop their filmmaking style for the next round of shorts that they do? Well, we had a mentorship program on this particular one as well where a lot of established directors um, were voices for, for our filmmakers. Um, but you know, it wasn't about teaching them a style. They have their own style. It was about our directors being able to tap into these resources and to say, okay, what do you think about this? Getting notes from people, you know? Getting notes from executives at the Weinstein Company or from these mentors. And some of these notes were right and they worked and some of them didn't make sense. But it's good having these points of reference from people that have this experience. And experience is very valuable, you know? What advice do you have for filmmakers now that want to submit for um, the Lexus Shorts program? Um, well, we don't know if it's going on to a third year yet. We hope it is. Um, but there's going to be a lot more of stuff like this. This category of branded entertainment, what I call advertainment, you know, it's, you're going to see a lot more of this. And the short film itself is really a great medium for that. You know, the short film used to be you'd only be able to see it if you went to film festivals or if you knew somebody that had a DVD or even a VHS cassette, you know, with the proliferation of the internet, you have a business model for shorts now that did not exist before. And short format entertainment is the most consumed entertainment online. Mm -hmm. So you take these things together and the fact that anybody can go and buy a camera and market their movie and cut their movie with tools that are available to everybody. I'm not saying that everybody is going to make it, but everybody can do it. So what I say is there's just keep your eyes open for a lot of these opportunities because there's going to be a lot more. And if Lexus, does, if Lexus does end up doing another year, which I hope they will be, then you can always check out LexusShortFilms.com and you'll see information about that. And then you can also check out last year's films. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, Joey. Sure. Thank you.